Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can make your own motions that include interactivity with accessories, and how you can integrate this with the actor group feature. Let's start off by looking at the old way in which your character will utilize accessories in their animations by first applying this motion here, and some dedicated accessories that are automatically assigned to the right and left hands. Previously, you could only assign each accessory to a single hand, after which it would not be able to be switched from one hand to the other. You need to first delete it and then reapply it, however the new system is more flexible and will automatically load accessories when you apply an accessory linked motion. Let's look briefly at how to convert a prop to an accessory. After importing in this baton prop, I can attach it to my character's hand via the right click menu, and then hit reset zero out in the transform section of the attributes tab as a quick way to align it with the hand bone. To confirm the accuracy of the attachment, Enter into the parent bone settings, ensure that the correct bone is selected, and then position it accordingly. Accessories can be attached to any character bone, and in the parent bone settings, we can click the add button to add the left hand from the list. Be sure to position the accessory properly in the left hand as well before hitting apply, then you can toggle the accessory between hands from the parent bone dropdown. After that, you'll want to make sure the baton is selected and then save it to the other subcategory under accessories. You can reposition your camera before you save to get a more accurate thumbnail or simply load in a pre-made image file. Now when we apply this accessory to our character, it will automatically be assigned to the right hand, as that is what we set as default. If you right click and drag the accessory, you'll get a drop down menu where you can specify which hand the accessory will be assigned to, so we can also add it to the left hand. Next let's look at how we can pair an accessory with a motion in a motion plus file so that it will automatically be loaded whenever we apply that motion. Start by making sure that you have a motion applied and ensure that the accessory is aligned properly to accommodate potential differences in the positioning, like the fingers here. After that, we need to save our animation as a motion plus file. Be aware that in order to save this way, you need to have your project length set to the same length as the animation that you want to save. In the options window that pops up, ensure that you have both batons selected under auto load accessories. After that, we can apply that saved motion to any character and have the batons automatically positioned correctly. You'll also get a dedicated motion clip appear in the accessories motion track as well. Smart accessories can be used in a wide variety of ways in iClone, including with actor groups and motion director actors and props. Check out the website linked in the description for more info and examples. Okay, let's look at how to add more variation to our accessory motions next. To get info on any accessory linked to your motion, you can right click on the thumbnail and select motion and accessory pairing. This is where you can link even more accessories to this motion by clicking and dragging them from the content manager. After that, when you right click and drag the motion to your character, you can select the added accessories from the options dialog that pops up. Be aware that not every accessory will be positioned perfectly using this method, so you may need to utilize the method we showed earlier to get the proper position. You can also load up individual accessories with different material options. If you right click on the accessory itself and choose edit relation, you can see that this particular accessory doesn't have any associated materials linked yet. You can find a bunch of materials under the media category in your content manager, and you can right click and select find file to copy the material path, then in the accessory content information, click add and choose the material files you want. Once you do this, those materials will automatically be updated in your accessory linked motion as well, and you can choose them when you apply with the right click and drag method. Okay, next let's look at utilizing these accessory linked motions in actor groups. Let's start by creating an actor group from the create menu. You can right click on any of the tags to search for either an actor or motion that has matching tags in your content manager. I'll click and drag a few actors into my viewport, 
and you'll see them appear in our actor pool. You can also click and drag additional actors from the content manager directly to the actor pool for a more diverse base group for random generation. Now the motion pool is where we want to click and drag our accessory linked motions to. You can specify a tag here to only apply that accessory to a particular actor type. And you can also access the motion and accessory pairing options here as well. You can also organize your accessories into specific groups, which gives you more control over which accessories are paired together in this case. If we assign the blue batons to group 1 and the red batons to group 2, we can ensure that the actor will always wield the same colored batons in both hands. You can also specify additional tags here for further filtering. Now you're all set to save your actor group. We'll just save it as an iActor group file for now. For more info on packaging, please check out the dedicated actor group tutorials. Now when we apply it, you'll have all of your standard actor group options, including the option to randomize your accessories and materials. If you're satisfied with the current accessories but want to randomize the materials only, just select that option. You can also choose to randomly assign motions from the motion pool we saw earlier. And the same goes for the actors. Now if I update any of the accessory linked motions that are part of the actor group I just saved, they will not automatically update in the actor group once you reapply it. So we'll need to reload the actor group we saved, delete the existing motion, and reload the updated one to our motion pool. Now when we randomize, you'll see an actor with the newly added megaphones. Alright, that's it for this tutorial guys. Smart accessories are an intuitive new feature that will save you tons of time on your workflow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.